Hi, everybody. Welcome to the fifth annual White House Science Fair. I'm so excited to join you today. Uh, my name is Stephanie Santoso. Uh, I work here at the White House, and I'm here with Bill Nye, the science guy. Hey, okay, Bill. <laughs> as well as Victor Cruz of the New York Giants. Thank you. Um, so today we are celebrating all of the amazing uh, breakthroughs that um, students in science, technology, and engineering and math have made over the course of the past uh, year. And uh, we're also celebrating um, some amazing commitments that are being announced today to support uh, more ways for students to engage in uh, STEM, in science, technology, engineering, and math. And so um, I'm actually here with a number of our student exhibitors. We're going to learn a little bit more about their projects. Um, so I want to turn it over to uh, Bill and Victor to, uh, to introduce our first team here. No, you don't know. <laughs> Any questions on what we've covered so far? No, what you, what's your project? What did you guys, how did you all get here? Uh, we entered a national competition and we designed a mental health app for teenagers. Uh, who have, you have, how did you come up with this? You saw a need. Yeah, um, we all have personal experience and being teenagers, we just thought we could have a, offer a unique perspective um, on the, the, how to deal with the problem. So if you have a phone, if, if I'm a teenager, which I was, <laughs> <laughs> and you have a phone, you can, this thing will help you do something? Yes, it'll help you. It has a journal where you can write down your feelings and you can save them into there. If you don't feel comfortable enough talking to someone, you can save them and once you do, it'll have them there and you can pull out what you've been feeling and what you've been experiencing. It also has um, a way to manage like um, exercise techniques, breathing techniques, and resources to hotlines to reach out and get help. So the How project long did it take you to write this thing? Yeah. It took us, the idea probably took us like a month to code it. We've been co only coding for like two weeks. And you guys won an actual competition, right? Yes, we won a National Verizon App Challenge competition. That's fantastic. And um, what, um, what stage is your project at now? Where, where are you guys going from here? Well, we're still working on uh, the coding part of it. So right now it's just kind of bare functionalities and uh, we still have a lot to code, but we're hoping to be finished with it by June and it'll be available on the Google Play Store. I think that's an amazing app because yeah. kids nowadays are shy about talking about the things that they feel, especially young teenagers. So I commend you guys for making uh, an amazing app that kids can use and not feel, you know, not feel shy about it and use it. So congratulations. Yeah. At some point, yes, <laughs> I was a teenager, and I was I wasn't always you know as boisterous about my feelings and stuff like that. So if I had an app like this uh, when I was younger, I would I would have definitely used it. Thanks so much, Thank and uh, just we didn't get your names or where you're from, so maybe we could do. We're doing a reverse intro, so uh, quickly okay. before um, you guys have to get back to your exhibits, uh, your names and where you're. Um, my name is Stephanie, and I'm from Tritech Skills Center in Kennewick, Washington. Amanda, and I'm from Tritech Skills Center in Kennewick, Washington. Chloe, and I'm from Tritech Skills Center in Kennewick, Washington. Thanks so much. Congratulations on being here today. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Not too so soon. So today we are, soon, we're bro. actually um, announcing um, uh, what will put us at over um, one billion dollars uh, in commitments uh, related to the president's Educate to Innovate campaign, which is pretty amazing. So, Absolutely. I think we've got our, our next group of students okay. up right now. Here they are. Come on in. All right, guys, come on in. Do you want to introduce yourselves briefly? Your yes. name. Uh, hello, my name is Jonathan Hernandez, and I am from Lancaster, California, Sora High School. Hello, my name is Fontes Naoko, and I'm from Lancaster, California, and we represent Sawyer High School and Men's Team. So, so tell us about tell us about your invention. What do you make? So, oh, so our team invented the um, Iris, which is a blood alcohol detection bracelet, and basically how it works is that. Um, oh, really? So oh, yeah. let's say I've been drinking. <laughs> I just take this thing and blow on. And then it uh, detects elk? Yes, yes, yes it ethanol. Is. And so, but those things are normally these huge machines, right? Yes. And we've managed to cut it to one eighth of size just because. Exactly. We've managed to cut it to one eighth of size because the, the, we went to a pig processor and mm -hmm. stacked the boards on top of each other. The way you do? Yeah. How long so, did it take you to do this? Oh, it took us a couple months. It, it was definitely months. a process that took hours and hours and hours and hours. 
So where did you get the rubber bracelet? Is that a standard thing that you can... Uh, actually... This is, yeah, this is something that's um, 3D printed. Um, we actually started with the original polyethylene material, and then we converted it to a silicon, silicon rubber. rubber. So it's a lot more uh, this thinnest This so bracelet. cool, you guys. Right. And it's uh, beautiful. Oh. Oh, let's turn on. And, the, and why did you come up? I mean, it's an unusual thing. You guys are in high school, right? Well, well I'm a first year in university. <laughs> well, in our, sorry. in our community, it's a really prevalent problem, mm -hmm. drinking under the influence, and it's something that needs to be addressed everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, as we were working on the years, a local story was that um, a neighboring high school, mm -hmm. um, who was our age at the time, she was sleeping on her couch inside of her house. And a man who was just decided to drink under the influence was driving which was already a horrible situation and she's sleeping on her couch inside of her house and he drives and he crashes into her house and she dies which is that is just tragic horrible it's tragic so yeah. we need to bring awareness towards drinking under the influence and why it should be stopped driving under the influence driving yeah. under the influence yeah, sorry yeah, about that you. Yeah. so you took a you, you found a you identified a, a, a problem in your community, yes. um, not only in your community, that's actually a, a national problem, and, and you really wanted to figure out a way to, to, um, to, to fix that. Yes, so that was how you did that. That's amazing. And this thing must cost so much less than a conventional machine. So the cost is actually 13% um, of the other competitors, and it is about $20. So it's so very cost effective. So that's an 87% reduction? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes exactly. Is. Wow. Very, that's thank amazing. Thank you so much for being here today. Okay, um, so we'll let you get back to what I'm sure are lots of other visitors who want to check out your exhibits. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Take thank care. You. Congratulations. Carry on. All right. Um, we got our next so I group. think we're ready for our, our next student exhibitor. Um, so we have Sierra Seabreeze um, from Baltimore, Maryland. Come on, Come on down. over, Sierra. Tell us a little bit about your project. Uh, so my project is a digital jukebox. Uh, each key is one number, each song is two. So when you press two keys that coordinate to a song, they'll uh, uh, send a signal to the Raspberry Pi, which will then uh, pull the song from a Spotify playlist. So you programmed a Raspberry Pi? Yes. Oh, wow. Of course you How long did it take you to do it? Uh, a week for the first version. I've been working on it since then. So I started it in December of 2013. I've recently just finished my last version uh, a week or two ago. So if I start two keys in my favorite song, it'll automatically sync through and find my favorite song and start playing it? It will, since there's a list of 88 songs mm -hmm. that you can pick from, so okay. uh, if you want 42, you press the 4 and then you press the 2, uh, and gotcha. then it'll send the signal to the Raspberry Pi, pull the song from the Spotify playlist and start playing it. Gotcha. That's awesome. Kind of the most, most awesome thing about the project is that you took, it's a digital jukebox, but you took an old piano, right? Yes. Okay, so do you want to tell us, how did you, where did you get the old piano? Um, so the old piano was left in my uh, tech center that I attend. I you, sure you, didn't, you sure you didn't take it from Bill's house? You <laughs> well, sure? sure. Yeah, that one's still there. <laughs> um, was. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, it was abandoned in the old rec center that we took over. Um, oh, wow. So I just, uh, they were recently going to get rid of it, and um, I decided to turn it into a jukebox. So did you hook switches up to every key? Yeah, every key is wrapped in copper tape, and then there's a ground behind the copper tape. So it's a, a mechanical contact. Yeah. What was the hardest thing about the project? What was uh, most challenging for you? Getting all the keys to work in one go. Uh, so each key would try, like, would stick, or like they wouldn't make contact. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really hard getting all the keys to work. But you, you did. I Just did. Just to take a lot of That's things awesome. apart and put them back together. Yeah, multiple times. You persevered. Yes. <laughs> Sounds I have like to find her station so I can dance a little bit while we go yeah. up there. Yeah. Find my favorite song. <laughs> now, what, like, what's a typical song? What, what is 42, for example? Uh, 42. You can make it up. We don't know. <laughs> I think it's Ed Sheeran. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, She's playing right now in the background. When I'm 17. Yeah. Uh, when I'm 17. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love you the whole time. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but is, so, for example, way down to the left, is that where I find Megan Trainer all about that bass? <laughs> way down to the left? Um, and so, there will be nine keys, or there's ten keys counting zero. Uh, so, then if you want, like, 69, you press the six and then you press the nine, uh, which will queue up. You've got a friend in me. Okay. So I think maybe later today we'll have a dance yes. party. Yeah, 100%. On the, on the floor of science fair. Yeah. <laughs> so 88 songs, uh, three minutes a song. We, yes, that's that's going to be good. Yeah, we'll be here all night. Right? Thanks so Absolutely. much, Sierra. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.
Have a great day at Science Fair. You too. Bye. All right. Okay. So I think we've got our next student here. Yes. So we've got Lily Bourne. Lily, do you want to come up and, come on down. and tell us a little bit about what you've been working on? It's really exciting, and it's a great personal story, too. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, my name's Lily Bourne, and uh, I'm the inventor of the kangaroo cup. And it's pretty much a cup that's less likely to tip over or spill, which I originally invented for my grandfather who has Parkinson's disease. And so how did you um, come up with the, the idea for the cup? Because it, it's a really unique cup. It has three legs, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought since, um, since my grandfather was spilling, then maybe if a cup had something to lean off of, then it would be less likely to tip over or spill. Because he has tremors, right? That's yeah. what you're saying. Well, yeah. Now and then, mm -hmm. with Parkinson's. Yeah. So this cup doesn't spill. Um, it's less likely to, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. I think this is important for me because I've definitely had people in my family with Parkinson's, and I've seen them spill and you know things like that. So I commend you on making a very great uh, uh, cup that, you know, highly less likely to spill, but it, just something that they have um, that that will help them with that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. My experience with Parkinson's patients, they get nervous and it gets worse. There's definitely some mental. Yeah. So if they have confidence that they can set this thing down without spilling it, mm -hmm. it's probably, that's really cool. What's it made of? Um, the first or you have to kill me if you told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but the first one was made out of ceramic and right now we're working on the plastic one, on the plastic version, which. How did you make one out of ceramic? Um, the um, so we went to China for the first one, and specifically Jing De Jin, because it's the it's the porcelain capital of the world. So we thought that would be the best place to kind of take off. Do you speak yeah. Chinese? Are you fluent in Chinese? <laughs> um, I know a small handful. Was that the first time you had ever been to China before? Uh, no, I've actually been there about five times now. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm adopted from China, so okay. yeah. Awesome. And so where, um, where does Kangaroo Cup go from here? Um, so right now we're hoping to get the plastic version out this May. And, um, and, the, and then right now we're thinking about the Kangaroo Bowl. We're not very sure, but we're thinking about it. Wow. So hold on, what year are you? Huh? What, what, what year are you? What grade are you in? Oh, um, I'm in seventh grade. It's amazing. So she's wow. an inventor, a problem solver, <laughs> and she's an entrepreneur at 12. Way I can't even go. think about what I was doing at 12. <laughs> I, I, I was just trying to get through classes, I think. So, exactly. Well, congratulations, Lily. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah. Fist bump. We're, we're doing fist bumps. There fist we bumps. go. Fist bumps. Oh, wait. Congratulations. Thank you. Have a great time today. Grade, That's amazing. All right. So All right. Um, uh, let's bring up our next uh, two student exhibitors. Let's Come do up, it. guys. So, Steph, be sure to Come on in. Turn to the camera. Yeah. Greetings, greetings. Come on in. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, do you want to go? Oh, cool. Introduce yourself. So, who are you, sir? My name is Mohammed Said, and uh, I am from Cambridge. Um, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yes. So we we basically worked on a project called Hacking Wheelchair, where we made attachments for wheelchairs. Um, I created this uh, arm that's called the universal arm and the universal arm have multiple functionalities. And the overall goal of this was, so if you are in a wheelchair, you need to beat the time. So the whole thing will take you like five seconds to assemble, and they are all magnetized. Here, I'll hold this. So what happens is if you want to have dinner, you actually have a date. This looks like it was printed, is that right? It's laser cut. Well, laser cut. Yeah. 3D printed. Yeah. So I see the uh, layers. Yeah. Yeah, and there is actually magnets incorporated inside. So when you put it in, it will not fall off. And uh, what is cool about this is that also I made a canopy for it. So the canopy is actually out of home. Uh, it's not completed. And and you two work on this together? So we have two kind of separate projects. So we have two different projects that kind of are intertwined by the concept of them. So we both created wheelchair attachments. 
So how how did you get involved? I mean, I can see how he got it was natural, for him, but how did you get involved? So at school, we were given the problem um, to hack a wheelchair and to make it better. And so what we did is we all broke off into teams and made different attachments that could be add-ons to the wheelchair. Um, and I actually worked on a hand drive wheelchair um, attachment that allows any wheelchair to be powered by a rowing motion instead of a wheeling motion. That's really interesting. I'm not using the tray. I can use my arm for other things. For example, I'm a filmmaker and I like big cameras, so I made myself a tripod because I can't find this online. So I put it, oh, it goes great. to any camera and also I need a cup holder and the cool thing about the cup holder is... Look how lightweight it is. It's very light. Yeah. And the cool, it snaps right in. It snaps and it's yeah. magnetic, it doesn't fall out. And it's different because instead of other cups you can use a mag as well because this holes allow the handle to go. Uh -huh, yep. So kind of the amazing thing is that it's this is really versatile. You can you can adjust and create additional attachments based off of what other needs you might have. Any attachment you create, I have this in the 3D software that I attach this part to it, and then you. So you wrote you wrote software to 3D print this stuff. Yeah, I used the uh, 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 Fusion 360. And Rhino, actually, all of this was made with measurements, exact geometric measurements, and then I 3D printed it. Where did you guys work on all of these? Because some of these tools and technologies, like laser cutters and 3D printers, did you have those at your school or local, you know, local space? So we go to a school called New View Studio, and it's an innovation lab in Cambridge. And basically, it's a non-accredited high school that's all project-based learning. And so we have two week periods of time when we work on new projects. And so we have everything there from creating musical prosthetics to hacking wheelchairs to solving global warming. And basically we solve all those problems and then as soon as the two weeks are over, then we go to a new one. And we basically are taught instead of like math and English, we're taught how to do CAD modeling, how to code and how to um, make films and do animations and much more technology based and hands on. So everything is, you're learning all that stuff, but it's all integrated. Yeah, in exactly. Projects that you, you guys get to work on. Yeah. And do you, do you enjoy that? Is that something that's really I love it. Yeah? <laughs> that's so fantastic. How, did you, how do you get into that school rather than a conventional school? Well, actually, I was uh, going to a public school, and then they actually incorporated this program with my public school, Cambridge Range and Latin, because I was so into film and, you know, engineering and uh, business. I said this is a place where I can combine the three. So I applied and I got in and uh, we started inventing this stuff. And so this is all just two weeks? This is two weeks, but then we continued because the more attachment uh, I create, I get extra time to do it. It's just cool, you guys. So much innovation in such a, sh such a short amount of time. Are you going to market this? Yeah. So basically, so ours, um, the hand drive attachment, so it because it allows wheelchairs to be powered in a more efficient way. Um, there are basically wheelchairs that have this built into them and they cost anywhere to two th to $10,000. Yeah, and so because ours is entirely 3D printable and completely open source, it can fit on any wheelchair and it costs only $40 to make. It's incredible, low cost less than assistive technology. Of That's amazing. Well, we can't wait to see what you all do in the next two weeks. <laughs> Congratulations Thank again. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, so, you know, we've seen some amazing students solving some real world problems from low cost assistive technologies to, um, you know, uh, clean, clean water filters. And we've got another team here who's actually um, working on uh, something related to um, bees. And they're the Bee Aware team. So let's learn a little bit more about what, what they've been doing. Hi, guys. Do you want to uh, quickly introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and a little bit about your project? Um, I'm Virginia Wynn and I'm from Marietta, Georgia and our team originated from our summer camp, The Village, that helps out foster kids and neglected kids. My name is Stefan Isaiah Ellis and... <laughs> okay, my name is Ilya Wynn and I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Um, our robotics team originated from our summer camp. Our team name is 5594 and we're with FIRST Robotics. 
Um, we're doing um, FRC competition. Um, and go next, Taj. Yeah. Um, I'm Taj Rhodes. I do a little bit of everything. I helped wire, build, and program. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Johnny Manuel. Um, I'm part of the FRC team that originated from our summer camp, The Village. I help build, wire, and pretty much everything. Hey, my name is Malachi Williams, and um, I'm sorry. Um, um, this is our this is my first robotic team that I ever built. Um, I'm from Georgia, and. I'm 16 years old and I go to Tucker High School. So how did you guys come up with the idea of, uh, of, of making what you guys made? It was during summer, was it during summer camp? Yeah, it was during summer camp. You know, we didn't, you know, we're all um, really good at working together so we decided we might as well just do something. And we just came up with robotics. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we've been working on it for about two months. We've been working on it for about two months. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what was kind of the the impetus for um, what was the sort of the idea behind the project? Like, what what gave you guys the idea to work on this project? Um, the competition actually uh, set it out for recycling this year, and then so mm -hmm. we're basic. We were basically lifting things and like moving them off the side. It's like moving like debris or so trash and rubble. It's it's basically <laughs> like basically like moving debris or compact debris and moving it and putting it somewhere else. So you guys had a like they they told you what the task was in advance. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Um, and where'd you guys get the, the parts for the robot, or, or um, we, where did you we guys find that stuff? Uh, we were sponsored, and they actually shipped, shipped it to us. And we, we got a starter kit, like a basic chassis, and then from the chassis we built on to the robot. And had you guys, um, had any of you worked with robotics before? Were you um, kind of experienced it? Wow, so, yeah. so what was that experience like? Uh, it was hard at first, but yeah. we just had to stay, stick together and work, work together. And yeah. Finish it. Do you guys think you'll um, work on another robotics project or um, yeah. uh, some other type of tech or science project uh, moving forward? Yeah. yeah, I think we'll actually be better in the upcoming next year. Since so this is a improve and, and, and yep. do even better. For we want to be able to come back next year and win. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so excited to have you, and we're really honored that you were able to join us for Science Fair today. Thank so, you. yeah, congratulations. So there's just so much excitement on the floor right now, and you can probably hear there's a ton of, um, of activity inventions. in the background. It's, All these inventions are really cool. I know, man. and it's really inspiring. Yeah. I Every time I talk to another student, I think, oh, man, I what should have I doing more effectively used old, my, right? my years in, in <laughs> middle school and high school. It's very well said. More effective. More you should have used should your more time productive. more effectively. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, let's bring up our another group of let's students. Do let's do it. Come on over, guys. Come on in. All right, all these colors and patterns, I love it. Um, do you want to um, uh, tell us a little bit about your project? We'll introduce yourselves, maybe names and ages, and then your a little bit about your project. Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> um. My name is Madeline Hickman, and my my age is 11. I'm about to be 12, and we're from San Antonio, Texas. My name is Calista Ibarra. I'm 12, and I'm from San Antonio. I'm Anthony Holmes. I'm 13, also from San Antonio. I'm Drico Burbio. Um, I'm 11, and I'm also from San Antonio, Texas. Will you guys tell us what you're exhibiting today? Yeah. <laughs> Our project was about sodium tetraborate crystals, and we are growing them in a microgravity environment. <laughs> so casually. So, so stuff. Hmm? 
Uh, we were growing my, uh, Toadium Tetrabori crystals on the ISS. We actually got there through a competition. The, the International Space Station. Yeah, in space. Uh, we went through a competition called SSCP, Student Space Flight Experiment Program. Uh, it was district-wide for our whole school. And uh, from like 400 projects, 300 projects, we were chosen. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. How long did it guys take you to, to put all this stuff together? Uh, finishing from today, from when you started, about a year and two months. Oh, wow. From beginning to end. So nice. how big is this experiment? Only six inches long. Yeah, and half an inch wide. Half an inch wide. It's very small. Yeah, we did. We, yeah, we needed to make sure that nothing was gonna happen wrong on the ISS. Nothing yeah. would well blow up. So, uh, did, did what you predicted would happen happen? Uh, well, we don't really know that yet because we. S We're waiting to see. Uh, <laughs> um, Still got to test it out, right? See if it works. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's flying now. No, no. Oh. In a way, our hypothesis was correct, but also it wasn't. They, microgravity did change the growing of the crystals, but not in the way we predicted. So you discovered something new? Yes, in a way. Uh, in microgravity, the, crystal, the crystalline structures, each cell is just randomly placed all over the place. No, I'm here, I'm there. On Earth, they're all rectangular prisms, uh, cube prisms, yeah. They're all even on Earth, but in space, they're just like snowflakes. They're just all random, nothing compared to each other. So then, let me ask you, could you hypo you think it's due to acceleration? No, mic in microgravity, there's hardly any gravity, right? So then, would it be possible to spin it or something and create some acceleration and change, custom shape the crystal? Uh, scientists, are actually currently, scientists are actually currently doing that. Oh, we are? Sorry, I'm trying that. They're accelerating it? Um, yes. Great. Is it based on discoveries that you guys helped make? I like to think so. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, looking forward to hearing more about um, future scientific exper experiments that you guys are going to launch into space. So keep up the great work. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you in space. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Carry on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we've got uh, a number of additional um, uh, students. We're going to talk to um, one more group of students here before um, uh, we sort of wrap things up. Um, actually, two more groups of students. <laughs> Come on over. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how they came to yourself? Yeah. Uh, my name is Sophia sanchez Mayes, and I'm creating an energy infrastructure for the nation based on algae. So I'm sure you've heard a lot about algae biofuel, uh, but with my project, um, we create more energy than we take, which is the first time that's really been demonstrated. That sounds like a violation methods. of the second law of thermodynamics, young <laughs> woman. Oh, what yeah. do you mean? You create more energy than you take in. Okay, um, so usually in the biofuel production process, uh, it takes energy to make energy. Um, so one of the most energy intensive steps was drying the algae and extracting the lipids prior to converting it to fuel. With my reaction, I eliminated that entirely with um, this process that I've created. Basically, we're pressure cooking the algae uh, along with some catalysts to bring down the energy required to, to do that. Um, and so that's, that's one of the really cool things I'm doing. But it's still not cost effective, not compared to cheap oil at the pump. That's where the second part of my project comes in. Um, so we're utilizing a certain algae from Yellowstone. It's extremophile. It can take a lot. Um, and it's actually purifying our wastewater. It takes out contaminants better than the anaerobic bacteria that we're currently using and creates an energy positive system. 35% of energy in every city in the United States is treating wastewater. So creating an energy positive system is very non-trivial and we're pioneering that at my local wastewater treatment plant right now. Wow, so you're already pilot testing. Yes, and it's, it's very promising. And you got the bacteria from ponds at Yellowstone? Uh, it's, it's an algae, and it's from, oh, algae, um, yeah. it's from the hot springs, yeah. yes. Right, we're, we're two different groups. So. 
Oh, I see. Okay. Do you want to talk about your book? Yeah. All right. So, um, my name is Isela. Um, uh, my name is Sergio. And so we're in a competition actually called First. Um, we build robots. Um, um, so what we have is we have six weeks to build a robot. Um, starting January, we get um, some kind of task, and from then on, we have to figure out some way to make that, make every single thing we can to get the, as many points as possible. It's a competition, you're trying to win. Yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, the robot we brought in to the, to the White House was from last year's competition. And that, last year's competition was called Aerial Assist. And what you had to do was you had to move an exercise ball from one robot to another and then score the exercise ball into a goal about six and a half feet tall around there. And uh, the way we accomplish this is we have two aluminum arms that's sort of our intake, so it's, it's down on the ground, and so when the ball's on the ground, we drive up to it. So is the ball heavy? It's an exercise ball. So, like the one you use for, it's big. Yeah. Cumbersome. Yes. Um, the, well, the way we solved that was we had a LEDAR sensor in front of our robot. Are you familiar with LEDAR? LEDAR. Yes. So we had one of those in front of our robot close to our intake system. So when we're driving up to the ball, it senses the velocity of the ball as we're driving to it and if it's coming towards us. So in, in the code that we wrote, we wrote uh, once the, the ball is this close and once the velocity is this, close the arms. So we kind of took the human out of the equation so we don't have mu as much human error. Because the other, did yeah. other teams rely on their own <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and one of the coolest things about their robot and all of First Robots is the interaction. So they're competing against other bots, they're playing defense, they're playing <laughs> offense, and that's just so cool to watch. That's exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot more like a sport than a battle boss kind of thing. We don't destroy each other. It's, it's like a sport. We try not to hurt the other team, but we do play defense to try and to not the like the excitement at the competition yeah. is palpable. Like any, any Exactly. Speaking of the human element, now, speaking of sports uh, yeah, in, Ari in, Ar in Arizona, uh, the AIA, the, the people that do all the sports stuff in Arizona, they deemed robotics as a sport in Arizona. Oh, really? So I, we're actually having a state championship in May. So we can get one of those fancy banners that they put in the gyms for Absolutely. when you win. And we could also get varsity jackets and letters. Oh, I for love me. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seeing all of the efforts are so awesome. Computer science is a second language. Yeah. Bots is a sport. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, all of you. Carry on. Yep. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day, guys. So that's it from us here at the White House Science Fair floor, but stay tuned. Um, we're going to have remarks from the president in just a little bit. The president. The president of the White House. <laughs> of, All right. Of the, of the U.S. US. Yeah. He lives in the White House and works in the White House. Anyway, signing off now. Um, thanks so much for joining us, everybody.